Next up, we will be learning about following compressed meters from Jayla. Um, Thank you. Uh, let, me, let me do this. All right. So uh, this is a joint work with grad student Yuan Zhili from Princeton University. So in this talk, I'm going to study a very similar problem, online learning of ASM vectors. So this is a game between a player and an adversary. So it's an online game. In each iteration k, the player and the adversary simultaneously action. The player chooses the unit vector wk in d-dimensional space, and the adversary chooses the symmetric matrix ak, that is d by d. So the player's strategy can depend on the past iteration and as well as the adversary. Now the so-called gain of the player at iteration k is the following quadratic form, w transpose a w. And the total gain of the player is the summation of the gain <coughs> over all the iterations, say t iterations. Now the so-called maximum regret is defined to be the difference between the total gain of the player and the gain of the best strategy, a unit vector u, after seeing all of the AKs. Okay? The best strategy in hindsight. You compute this difference, this is known as total regret. Now the player's goal is to minimize regret. For simplicity, in order to simplify notation, let me assume that all the eigenvalues values of A are between 0 and 1. This is the problem I want to study. So before our work, from a very high level, there exist only two types of strategies. One of them is the so-called matrix multiplicative weight update strategy, which is a subclass of this uh, more general follow the regress the leader uh, framework. Sorry, follow the regularize the leader framework. Here is how the player thinks. The player in each iteration <coughs> computes a matrix WK using matrix exponential. So here, sigma k minus one is the partial sum over all of the matrices the player has seen in the first k minus one rounds, and then eta is a learning rate, a positive real value. Now the player computes matrix exponential, <coughs> which is e to the eta times the partial sum. So recall that if we have a symmetric matrix X, then the matrix exponential is nothing but to raise all the eigenvalues to the exponent. So this is the definition of matrix exponential. Then once you have this exponential, you scale it by the trace. That gives back you a matrix WK that has trace 1. Now the player eigen decomposes W into eigenvectors. So here yj's are orthogonal eigenvectors and the pj's are eigenvalues. Being trace 1 means that all of the pj's will sum up to 1 and therefore the player just plays strategy yj which is a d-dimensional vector with probability pj. So this is the so-called matrix multiplicative weight update strategy of the player. It is famously known that this strategy obtains up to constant factor optimal regret. So the total regret of the player is at most root t times log of the dimension. Uh, after you appropriately choose the learning rate. But unfortunately, this strategy runs very slow because you need to even decompose the whole matrix and that takes running time at least matrix inversion, which is d to the omega, like 2.3 something. And also it's very impractical. For this reason, researchers also started to design a separate kind of strategy that is what they call follow the perturb leader strategy. And here's how it works, very simple. In each iteration k, again, we compute the partial sum. And this time, instead, we compute the leading eigenvector, the maximum eigenvector of this partial sum, plus a random perturbation, RR transpose. It's a random rank one matrix, where R is a random Gaussian vector, with norm being appropriately chosen. So this strategy runs fast. Each iteration only requires a leading eigenvector computation, which is certainly faster than fully decompose the matrix. But unfortunately, it has a relatively worse regret. So the total regret is root dimension times t. So you lose this root d factor. In sum, we have seen two strategies. One of them is optimal in terms of total regret, but the other one has a faster running time per iteration. By the way, this root d factor is also tight. There exists the matrices AK, so that really follow the perturb leader doesn't run well. We are going to see this example later. 
The main focus of this talk is to, pre uh, is to present a new strategy that we call follow the compressed leader, in which we, up to log factors, match the optimal regret of matrix multiplicative weight update, but at the same time, in each iteration, our new strategy recalls only logarithmic number of computations of solving linear systems. If you think about it, although in practice it depends on you know, the actual implementations, but in general, in most cases, computing the full eigen decomposition should be slower than computing the leading eigenvector of a matrix, which in turn is no faster than computing the solution of a linear system. One can in fact even quantify this by using the so-called worst case complexity for achieving some epsilon average regret. I'm not going into the details, you can find it in our paper, but once you see that complexity quantities, then you can see that the follow the compressor leader is really the winner here. So for this talk, I plan to introduce what this strategy is and then briefly describe why it achieves optimal regret. So here is our new strategy, follow the compressor leader. At the very beginning, we choose a learning rate eta to be roughly the same as before, like 1 over root t. We also choose an even integer parameter q. In theory, q needs to be logarithmic in terms of dimension, but in practice, I think 10 just suffices. So think about it as 10. Then the algorithm initializes itself with three random Gaussian vectors, u1, u2, u3, with all the entries from Gaussian, standard Gaussians, n0, 1. Now in each iteration k, the algorithm denotes by xk, the following matrix, a constant times identity minus learning rate minus learning rate times the partial sum, then raised to the power minus 10. And here this constant c is defined to be the unique constant such that not only the matrix we want to invert is positive definite, meaning all the eigenvalues are strictly positive, but also the summation of the following three quadratic quantities, three real values, u1 transpose x u1, u2, u3, the summation of them equals to roughly 3. Okay? There exists a unique constant and say you find it. Now finally, you eigen decompose the following rank 3 matrix into three orthogonal eigenvectors, and all the, the three values of p will sum up to 1. And finally, you play yj with probability pj. So this is a full description of our new strategy. So two questions remain. First, why can we have a fast implementation? And two, why does it have low regret? Let me try to answer the first question first. So we denoted by this xk, this matrix inversion, but we never explicitly compute it. Computing it requires matrix inversion, which is like n to the omega. But instead, whenever we want to use it, for instance here, we want to compute the quadratic form u transpose x u, then we stare at it and you can quickly realize that it's nothing but the Euclidean norm square of the following vector. And this vector is to apply the matrix inversion q over two times, which is five times in this case, on top of this vector. So this therefore requires you to solve just five times of linear systems, and that gives you a vector and you compute the Euclidean norm square. Well. In this way, you can efficiently compute this and the other two using just <coughs> linear system solvers. And finally, this value of CK, one can just binary search over it, and this rank 3 decomposition of the Eigen system can also be implemented in just linear time. It's not very hard, but also in our paper. So therefore, I would just conclude uh, from this very high level that this new strategy can be implemented so that each iteration requires a logarithmic number of computations of solving linear systems. But next, why does it have low regret? Let us focus on this new matrix X for a moment, and I claim without proof that this new matrix X in fact behaves very similarly to the matrix WK from matrix multiplicative weight update. So this can be made very precise. It was actually already in our prior work, published in stock two years ago. But from in this high-level talk, let me just give you one example. Suppose the partial sum so far is a diagonal matrix like 3, 2, 1. Now, I claim that WK up to the scaling factor is nothing but e to the 3 eta, e to the 2 eta, and e to the eta. 
In contrast, xk, if you compute it, is like the constant c minus 3 eta to the negative 10 and 2 eta and 1 eta. So without thinking too much about the math, you can quickly realize that the first diagonal is large in both cases, the second diagonal is medium, and the third diagonal is small in both cases. So it's really this large matched to large and small matched to small correspondence that makes sure that this new matrix xk behaves similarly to the original matrix wk. Therefore, if instead of using wk we use xk, we can also get optimal regret. Unfortunately, this yes has successfully avoided the computation of matrix exponential, but still we have to compute matrix inverse. This is very slow. This now comes our second idea, which is to do compression. Let us try to compress this d by d matrix into lower dimensional space as follows. xk, we can write it as root xk times root xk by definition. Now let's add in between them a low rank random matrix UU transpose. Using general like random matrix theory, in particular Link Johnson Linda stress lemma, one can show that if U is sufficiently random, then the matrix on the right behaves similarly to the matrix on the, uh, on the left. But unfortunately, regardless of which random matrix theory you use, you ended up showing that the dimension of this, which is the number of columns of U, has to grow really linearly in terms of the number of iterations of the online game. And therefore, like, yes, you are compressing, but you're compressing to dimension T, which is not a good dimension. Therefore, in this paper, we completely avoided the use of random matrix theory, and we said, let's just compress to dimension three. And we somehow showed that it suffices. So this is built upon like a new tracing equality that we discovered in this paper for non-commutative matrix algebra, which I don't think I have any time to talk about that today. But instead, let me just show you why this magic number three, why dimension three, okay? Using one slide, one minute. Everyone knows chi-square distribution, okay? That is the summation of Gaussian random independent uh, ID Gaussian random variable squares. Some of you might have heard about the inverse chi-square distribution, which is one over the summation of the Gaussians. If you take the expectation of this random variable, I claim that the expectation is unbounded if k is one or two, but it becomes bounded when the dimension is at least three. So this is precisely why we need dimension three. So it looks very weird if it's the first time you see it, but don't blame me, I didn't design the word like this. So pictorially, one way to understand this is that the expectation of one over this chi-square distribution is nothing but an integral of one over the radius square over a unit ball in k-dimensional space. And fortunately, if the dimension is at least three, then most of the volume is actually going to stay inside the shell, inside the shell of this bore, and therefore if you take the integral, it becomes bounded. But if the dimension is one or two, then it becomes unbounded. So this is what we call inverse curse of dimensionality. So it's for this reason that we finally got this result. We get nearly optimal regret, and we have a fast per iteration running time. So this also works on um, like synthetic data, at least. For instance, if one uses random matrices AK, then all the three methods actually have roughly the same regret. But as you can see that if we start to use a more deterministic strategy like this, so let's try to use only diagonal matrices with diagonals all being one half, except the one of them being one, but we make the one to be in the first component for the first say 100 iterations, then we keep you know, shifting it to other places, then this very simple strategy alone already makes follow the compressed, uh, sorry, follow the perturbed leader uh, a not so good strategy in terms of regret. Not to say if we, um, if we add on top of that also rotation, if we also rotate the Egan space uh, so that the matrix is no longer diagonal, then follow the perturbed leader can really go very bad. But instead, our new method, follow the compressed leader, really matches the optimal regret in all of these cases. So in fact, in our paper, we also have more results. Uh, we also showed that in stochastic setting, we can compress to dimension one and outperform the state of the art. So this part, feel free to look at our paper. So that's all I want to say. Thank you.
So uh, maybe I missed this. When you define the matrix X, there's a constant C. That's right. right? So um, how do you actually compute that constant? So in theory, like we, uh, so one binary searches mm -hmm. over C. So if C, so remember C is the unique constant, so that something becomes three. So if the binary search, you know, find the right one, so it becomes three. In practice, just do binary search for like say five rounds. Mm -hmm. You can even use this value C from the previous iteration. Uh, and uh, then you get a rough, so make it say between two and four, that suffices. So um, I guess the other thing which was uh, maybe not so clear to me was, uh, so in, when we were doing follow the product leader in um, at least usual um, online data optimization or online complex optimization, there's obviously uh, what perturbation distribution you're using. Exactly, right? so, yes. So the gap, I guess, the gap you're talking about here is for the particular uh, for this run one distribution yes, yes. that's being used in that result. Do you know if, so because you, we, we can exactly match the multiplicative weights distribution using exactly. appropriate perturbation in the, in the standard setting. So is there also, are there better distributions that admit efficient algorithms? That's a perfect uh, question. So let, let me try to answer that. I know part of answers. So first of all, any follow the regularized leader strategy corresponds to some distribution, maybe yes. not explicitly writable. And here, I was stating this result in terms of perturbing by a rank one random matrix. Mm -hmm. And we also know that we, we tried it, we tried rank, high rank perturbation and it also doesn't work. And we know hard instances, so that it fails. But in general, for other perturbations, we don't really know. So in the literature, people pretty much just study random perturbation for this online learning of So, so we know that uh, for all rank one perturbations, do we know that the root D factor is unavoidable irrespective of the choice of the random vector or for particular distributions? So if the distributions are like random Gaussian entries, okay. then we know it's impossible. But we pretty much believe like all random matrices are roughly the same. So that's my... So it's a, a uniform distribution would... Yeah. So you know it wouldn't help. So uniform distributions are similar to the random Gaussian distributions because you know the universal law of semicircular of random matrix. Yes. But these are something we tried and felt. We have some hard instances, but uh, we can't rule out all possible distributions and we don't know how to prove that. Thanks. Good question. Uh, That's right. Uh, wouldn't the error uh, propagate, or do you need to exact power of the linear system? Another great question. So uh, there are a number of ways to solve linear systems, so uh, such as conjugate gradient, like SVRG, coordinate descent, and so on. So we would recommend a solver that solves it uh, up to linear convergence, meaning that, so first of all, the matrix we're going to invert is going to have good condition number. Okay. And therefore, like if you, you know, you typically have a linear convergence rate, and therefore if you keep doing that a number of times, the error propagates in a not so ugly fashion. So it's good. Thanks. All right, let's thank the speaker again.